Welcome back, everybody. This example 8.6 is our continuation of our discussion of uh, the work kinetic energy theorem. And this sled example, this boy is pulling a sled, um, we're going to keep in mind that the work kinetic energy theorem is that the, that the net work that is done equals a change in kinetic energy. And of course, change always make, equals final minus initial. And... Uh, Good I. There we go. <clears throat> and uh, and of course, kinetic energy we know to be one half mv squared. So we're going to have a final kinetic energy and an initial kinetic energy um, of this sled. Well, let's go ahead and start by drawing out the sled. A boy exerts a force of 11 newtons at 29 degrees above the horizontal on a 6.40 kilogram sled. Okay, so our sled. I'm going to draw in brown right here and. I'm just going to make it a square, all right. Uh, and he's applying a force of 11 newtons <coughs> at uh, an angle of 29 degrees above the horizontal. So that means is that we have our 11 newton force, uh, applied force equals 11 newtons. Um, but that's 29 degrees. Right, uh, you know what, I'm going to erase that. I'm just going to put a theta in there. Our theta, our angle from the horizontal, theta equals 29 degrees. I'm going to write it over on the far right. Okay? 29 degrees above the horizontal. So the, um, the applied force and the direction of motion are not going to be in the same direction. Um, why do we say that? Well, because the direction of motion... Well, think of it this way, if you pull up on a sled, is it going to follow you up into the air? No, it's going to move only in the horizontal <clears throat> direction. So it's going to undergo that distance or that displacement right there. Okay. Um, so it has moved two meters. Okay, so that distance D right there, I'll write that in green so it matches up. D equals 2.0 meters that it has moved. And um, it starts with an initial speed of um, 0 0.500 meters per second. So the initial velocity, VI, equals 0 0.5 meters per second. Um, and we want to find the final speed as well. All right, so uh, A... The work done by the boy on the sled, so the work done by the applied force is what we want to know. And part B, we want to find the final velocity of the sled, okay? Well, you may have noticed that I left out one of the forces right there. Um, we mentioned that it is a 6.40 kilogram sled. And I'll just go ahead and write that. The mass equals 6.4 uh, kilograms. But that creates a force downwards, right? mg right there, mg straight downwards. Well, is that creating any force uh, for or against the direction, or in or against the direction of motion? No, and in fact, it's not even creating any friction force, right? Because it says assume it slides horizontally without friction. So that's not really doing anything. You can say maybe it's creating a normal force, or it's causing the normal force from the, uh, the snow or whatever the sled is sliding on. Uh, but really, these... Um, these forces aren't going to be doing anything regarding the direction of motion. What is the force that is going to be up, um, doing something in the direction of motion? Well, it's a applied force right here. It's applied force of 11 newtons. Um, so let's solve for the work <coughs> done by the applied... Oops. Work done by the applied force. W force applied. Okay. Well, the, the force applied... The work done by the force applied equals the force applied times the distance that it is applied through. So it moves from here to here. It's two meters, right? 2.0. Well, you know what? I'm going to keep that in general terms for now. D <clears throat> times the cosine of the angle between them. Here is our distance moved. Here is our full force of, eight, or, or, of uh, 11 newtons. What's the, co what's the angle between them? Well, that's going to be our 29 degrees right there. So cosine of theta 
is going to go in there. Let's just go ahead and plug our values in and see what kind of work the boy does on the slit. So that, that force is going to be 11.0 newtons times 2.00 meters times a cosine of 29 degrees. That's going to give us our work done by the boy on the slit. And I get a total of 19.2.2 what? Well, working energy is measured in joules, right? So that's going to be J joules. Um, and remember that not all of the boy's work <coughs> is, um, I should say, not all the boy's force is being put into work. Only, you might say, only the horizontal component of it. Um, you might call it, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. Um, didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's see here. The force applied. Sorry, that's so small. Um, I didn't resize my pen in the x direction. You might say that's the x component of the force applied. Um, but whatever you call it, it's only that little component of his force that's actually doing any work right there. All right, is that all on the screen? There we go. All right. So some of his force that's being pulled is not being applied in the direction of motion. Um, all the, not all those 11 newtons are, but only a, por a portion of it, that x component of it are. All right. Um, let me zoom back out a little bit further. There we go. And uh, let's go for part B now. Okay, part B is what is <clears throat> the final velocity? V final. All right, well, remember velocity, and I'm going to shrink this down a little bit more even so I have some more space. Velocity is a function of kinetic energy, right? And what's the tie in between work and kinetic energy? Well, that's our work kinetic energy theorem, right? The network, network equals change in kinetic energy. That's kinetic final minus kinetic initial, um, which equals uh, one half mv squared final mass times velocity final squared minus one half mass times initial velocity squared. And we actually do have an initial velocity this time. That's 0.5 meters per second. So this is not going to cancel out. But the fact that we have a known network and we have that equal to this change in kinetic energy right here, we're going to set these two equal to each other and then solve. All right. Well, in fact, let's actually solve right now for that uh, final velocity. So let's add over this initial velocity, because this part right here is being subtracted, so we're going to add it over. So the network, network plus one half mass times initial velocity squared equals um, one half mv final squared. All right, what do we do to get rid of this one half and the two? Well, I'm going to multiply this two up, so that's going to be on the outside of all that stuff, and then this um, uh, this m right here is going to be divided down, so it's in the denominator. All right, everybody see what I'm doing right there? So this this went over to the other side already. So I'm multiplying this two up, dividing the m down, and to get rid of the square, I'm going to square root everything. Like so, that is going to be our final velocity, the final velocity of the slit. Let's just plug our values in and see what we get <coughs> for our final velocity. That's going to be two times. What is the net work done by the boy? Well, we found that um, in uh, in part A, right there, the net the network done by the the force applied. By the way, this should be network, which means the sum of all the works done. But since there isn't only one work being done, there's no friction. We don't have to subtract anything. So the network is the work done by that applied force. So that's our nine point nineteen point two joules. Nineteen point two plus, and this is still in parentheses right here. 1 half, I'm going to put 0.5 times the mass. What's the mass of our sled? Here's where the mass comes in. 6.40 times initial velocity squared 0 0.500. We're going to square that. And then close parentheses. All that's going to be underneath the square root, as is the mass of the sled 6.40 kilograms. And I didn't even leave any space for the final answer, but I'll shrink it down a little bit further, like slow, okay?
This is going to give us our final velocity. So the final velocity of the sled is what is all this stuff multiplied and divided and square rooted together? I get a total of 2.5 meters per second. 2.5 meters per second. And uh, fix that 5 right there. <coughs> 2.5. And I should really say 2.50 oh, meters per second in, in order to be correct significant figures. Um, but be careful about doing this because uh, you've got all this multiplied together and our 0.5 squared added to the 19.2, all that stuff times the 2, all that divided by 6.40, and then all that to uh, all that square rooted or to the 1 half power. I get a grand total of 2.50. Let me know if you get anything different, but that's what I get when I do my math, and um, that's a reasonable uh, final answer. So that's our example 8.6, the sliding sled. Again, we have our use of the work kinetic, uh, kinetic energy theorem. The work done is a ch is a result in a change in kinetic energy, and, um, and we're going to continue to use that this chapter. So that's it for example eight six. Thanks for following along. I'll see you on the next one.